Before we dive into making food out of clay, I'm going to show you three different building methods. The first method is what we call slab construction. And we would be using a slab, which is a thin piece of clay, typically a little bit thinner than our pinky, that you can use to construct something. The next method is what we call coiling. Coiling means we are taking a long snake of clay wrapping it around and around. And the last method is a pinch pot. And a pinch pot we have made since elementary school. I'm going to show you these three in depth and then you're going to decide which one you think is going to be best to create the food of your choice. Okay, so we right now see a slab construction, so a cheeseburger. Each and every piece of this cheeseburger has been created with a separate slab, so they have been rolled out cut into the shape and even a texture has been added to try to make it look as real as possible. So each individual piece was created separately. Okay, we also see french fries, which would have been created with a slab. A slab would have been rolled out, cut into each individual fry and then attach together, just to keep them together. That was the artist's choice to attach the fries together. Coiling could be a stack of pancakes. So each coil that is wrapped around and around has been attached to this flat slab with another slab on the tippity top. And then they just added various berries by scoring and slipping, which is something I will show you. Anytime there is trapped air, we have to poke a hole at the bottom so the air can escape. Okay, we see an avocado, which is made out of pinch pots. We call it the double pinch pot method, which is what I will show you, where instead of one pinch pot, we will take two, which closes up kind of like a balloon. And I'll start with the double pinch pot method to show you exactly what I mean by that. So I would start with just taking a chunk of clay and roll it into a ball. Let's just pretend I'm going to make an apple. Now, I cannot just roll up clay and call it an apple because when clay is too thick, like let's say thicker than our thumb, it may cause it to explode in the kiln because there is too much clay condensed together, not enough time to dry out completely. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut this ball of clay in half I'm going to make myself two pinch pots that are going to be the same size. Remember a pinch pot? We are starting by pressing our thumb on the inside, not going all the way through. But then using my other fingers on the outside of the clay with my thumb in the center and just pinching it and turning it. Pinching it and turning it. Pinching it and turning it. Okay, and we're trying to keep an equal uh, thickness of clay all the way around. I'm gonna do this two times. I'm gonna make two pinch pots. Now that I have two pinch pots, basically what I'm gonna be doing is putting them together. But I cannot just take these two pieces and just smush them. They're not gonna to stay together. I have to do something called scoring and slipping. I will use a needle tool and water. So I'm gonna fill up my little container with water. Scoring means we are scratching up the surface of the clay. So I'm gonna make these X marks all the way around. On both pinch pots. Add a little bit of water, which is the slip. Score and slip. Notice I'm not smearing it. I'm just kind of tapping it gently. Put both pinch pots together. Squish it just a little bit, a little bit of pressure. They are now stuck together. I now have to clear out this seam or smooth it out. I wanna go across the seam, so in the opposite direction. What this is going to do is smooth it out, join the seam together, and have these two pinch pots stay together better than if I did not do this. Take some time, smooth it out. Sometimes I like to do is clean my hands. I notice sometimes if my hands are really, really dirty with clay, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to smooth this out. 
I can change the form of this to try to make it an apple. I can start to roll it on the table gently. I'm not pressing too hard. I don't want this to collapse. Remember there's trapped air inside, just like that avocado there. Um, something I can use is what I call a paddle. I need to paddle it into the shape of an apple. So I'm just gently tapping the clay. Now this, I'm not hitting pretty hard. I am not making a loud noise with this paddle. I should never hear a paddle if you are working with it. You just tap gently on your clay to try to shape it exactly as you need it. I know an apple might have indentations on the top and the bottom. And I'm just going to look at a picture of an apple while I continuously try to form it into the form that I need. This is something that may take some time. If I wanted a little stem, I cannot just take it and stick it there. It's gonna end up falling off. So I need to score and slip it on. Even something this tiny, it needs to be scored and slipped. Add a little drop of water, smush it on. Okay, I can smooth it on with my finger or I can take a tool out of my bin and see if I like using a tool better. Okay, yeah, maybe paddle it a little bit more. Get it into the shape that I want. Um, I'm gonna turn this from an apple into a pumpkin just so you can see how different you can use tools. I'm gonna to use the edge of the paddle and lightly press into the clay, going all the way around. It kind of creates that texture or those like ribbed edges that a pumpkin would have. If I wanted to add a little um, leaf, I could just smush some clay, cut it out into the shape that I want it. Draw the the marks that a leaf would have. Okay, remember I also have to score and slip that on as well. So always score both pieces of clay, not just one. All right, so that's an example of the double pinch pot method. Think about what you can make with that method. Remember if there's trapped air, which could cause it to shatter in the kiln, I need to poke a hole with my needle tool all the way through and also write my name. Please do not forget to write your name on your project. The next method is coiling. Coiling can create donuts, stacks of pancakes, and many other things. I'm gonna show you how to make a donut. So I need to start with a slab of clay. Remember a slab of clay is just a flat piece of clay. Try not to make it too much thinner than your pinky. Cut out the donut shape. So this is going to be the base of my donut. I need to score all the way around. Also score around the inside of that little center of the donut. What I'm going to be doing is making coils. Coils are just a long strand of clay that you're going to roll out on your table. I apply equal pressure and roll it back and forth, starting from the center and working my way out. And you do this a couple of times until you get a coil about the size of your pinky finger. Since this is my first coil, I do need to score it and slip it, but we only need to do this for the first one. I'm gonna chop off the extra, and also do that on the inside. I'm building up walls on the outside of this donut and the inside. I keep rolling coils, and I keep stacking them. Notice that I'm not scoring and slipping every time. I only did that with the first. Something I need to do is smooth out the edges because this is not a stack of pancakes. If this was pancakes, I wouldn't have to do this. I can use any tool if I find it makes it easier. Keeping my hand on the inside so I'm not collapsing the clay and finding a tool that I think helps smooth out these edges. Since this is a donut, I should not see the different rings of clay. I'm just going to take my time and smooth out everything I possibly can. Sometimes if your clay is too wet, this will be difficult. Sometimes if you add too much water too, you see me adding a sponge every now and then. If you add too much, it's gonna start to collapse and be very difficult to work with. 
Now for the top of my donut. I do need to make another slab, so a flat piece of clay. Try to make it as equal as you can. I am going to trace my donut shape. Notice I'm also flipping this around a couple times so it doesn't stick. I'm going to trace the donut so I know the size I need. And it's a little bit too big, so I'm just gonna trim it a little bit. Score all of these coils inside and outside. Before I put it on, I'm actually gonna stuff the inside with paper towel. This will help it not collapse and that'll just burn away in the kiln. After I score and slip it on, I can then take some time to smooth that out. Remember, I like to clean my hands a little bit before I smooth it out. It just helps me, it makes it a little easier. And every time I'm holding my clay or I'm moving it, I'm very careful with it because the clay is very soft, so it, that means it can collapse. So just always be careful. I'm adding only a little bit of water. Remember what I said? Not too much water because it will end up harming the clay more than it's going to help it. Now I wanna create a texture that I would see in real life on this donut. I'm gonna take this dry sponge that I have and kind of stamp it, see if I like that. Okay, maybe there's gonna be like a fudge or some kind of icing that I would drip on top. Okay, I'm making tiny little sprinkles. I'm just smushing them on there. Okay, I didn't score and slip them, but I did smush them on pretty good. I poked a hole, wrote my name. Final method is the slab construction. Remember, slab construction is a flat piece of clay. So this whole piece of cake here is actually hollow. So same with this Coca-Cola can. Same with the spaghetti. Okay, those were all slabs they cut. To roll a slab, you're going to need two yardsticks and a rolling pin. And please watch how many times I flip my slab over because that kind of thing happens where it's just gonna stick. So I'm gonna roll, flip it, roll, flip it. Now when we're working with slabs, we want them to be leather hard before we build with them. Right now my clay is very soft and if I try to build with it, it's just gonna fall apart. So I'm going to cut out all of the pieces I know I need. So since I'm doing a slice of cake or a piece of pie, I know I need two triangle shapes, one for the top, one for the bottom. I would need two rectangles for the sides, and I can use a ruler or a yardstick to measure the size I know I need. Okay, so one rectangle for one side, and I'm gonna need two of those exactly the same. And then I would need the back piece, which will be a square or kind of a rectangle shape, so I would measure the size I know I need, cut it out, get rid of all my extra clay, roll it into a ball, and then I need to store it for next class because look at this, I cannot build with this. We need it to be leather hard, which means it's going to be a little bit more stiff and able to be constructed. So I'm gonna take paper towel, lay the clay on there, fold it over like an accordion. This is dry paper towel. Okay, I might need a tool to help me pick up these pieces, stack it, fold the paper over it, and then put it in a plastic bag until next class. Next class, I can tear carefully take the slabs out of the paper towel. So now they're going to be a little bit more stiff. They're gonna be ready to be built. I need to score and slip every piece of clay, remember that. So I'm gonna score the base going all the way around because I know I'm gonna take these pieces, which will be the walls. Okay, you know, I might have to trim them a little bit here and there, but I'm going to score them, add some water, smush it on a little bit, smooth it out. I like to use the back of my nail sometimes. You can do this where you're adding a tiny little coil Okay, a coil just gives it a little bit more stability, so you can do this, you don't have to do that. All right, I'm gonna just fast forward, score and slip all of my walls. The last piece, I'm gonna have to trim a lot so I can fit it in there. This is gonna take a lot of scoring and slipping, all these sides. Every piece of clay that touches should be scored and slipped together. Also take some time to smooth that out. Okay, 
pie. Now I'm gonna make this into a piece of pie. First I'm gonna add the top to it. So score it on both pieces. You can put a little paper towel in there. It just helps, again, make sh making sure it does not fall. Add some water. Go ahead and put it on. Smooth out the seam super fast. Now, if I'm making this into like a piece of pumpkin pie, I'm gonna think of maybe the crumble that would be at the bottom. It's almost like a graham cracker crumble, that crust. I'm gonna use this tool to kind of indent where I want the crust to be. Find a tool, give it a nice texture that it might look like in real life. Okay, so I'm gonna go all over that bottom crust area. Maybe for a little bit of whipped cream, I'll roll up a coil and score and slip that on. I'm not really thinking this looks too much like whipped cream. Maybe I can change the texture a little bit. Maybe when I paint it and I add a little bit of clear glaze on it, it'll help make it look shiny. Poke a hole, of course, so any air can escape. Get my name on it. And then I need to clean up my clay. So extra clay should be wedged, which means we're compressing the clay together. We're kind of making it into a ball of clay, trying to get out air bubbles. So my harder clay, this is a little bit stiffer. I'm gonna wedge that together separately. The softer clay, which is still very workable, I'm going to keep separate from the stiffer clay. I kind of turn them into these little cubes. I will have a bag that they will go in. We need to put our mat away. All of our tools get returned to our bucket. Needle tools, every table will have one. And they'll have two knives. I want the needle tools and the knives to go in that container. Keep any sponges in a separate container. Dump out the water. The water container will go in the sponge container section. All the tools, just clean them up a little bit. Put them in there dump out the water and then put that away now after I get a sponge and I did squeeze it out so there's not dripping water it's just a little bit of water I should have really just first kind of scooped all of the dust and clay into my hand but when you wipe down your table go back and forth in an up and down motion flip it over go over again and then you need to dry the table completely do not let it dry on its own if you do this, you're going to have a really, really clean table and you are all done.